Salloway Tay 7th grade. Um, this video is for any of my students who are unable to attend class in person. This is going to be an overview of the grammar for stage two of our textbook. Uh, the grammar in stage two focuses on the nominative and accusative cases, um, and I'll explain what those are in just a bit. Uh, this is specifically for nouns, so our grammar today is focusing on how nouns work in Latin. So let's get started. All right, so as I said, we are focusing on nouns, and in Latin, nouns um, can be in nominative or accusative cases, and I'll get to what those mean in just a bit. Um, but to start, let's kind of go back to uh, talking about word order, English versus Latin, because this is going to affect why certain things are the way they are in grammar and Latin. So English is a language that is dependent upon word order for meaning. So in a sentence, right, the words and the order that the words are in in the sentence is what gives us the meaning. If we mess with the word order, that changes the meaning. For example, we have this sentence, the dog bites the slave. When I rearrange the words to the slave bites the dog, that changes the meaning of the sentence, right? In this first sentence here, dog is our subject. It's the thing that's doing the action of the verb bites. And slave here is a direct object. It's receiving the action of the verb. By switching the order of the words in the slave bites the dog, the slave is now our subject and the dog is our direct object. So changing the order of the words changes their function in the sentence, changes the meaning of the sentence as a whole. So that's how English works. Now, Latin, we've already kind of seen how some word order can be different in Latin. Um, a lot of our sentences that we've seen so far, we have verbs at the ends of sentences. So that's one way in which word order is a bit different in Latin. Now, in Latin, meaning in a sentence doesn't come from word order. It comes from word endings and forms. So the words will change their endings and forms uh, depending on what they're doing in the sentence. So again, as we're focusing for nouns, noun endings will change whether they're the subject or if they're the direct object. So the endings are going to tell you what that noun is doing in a sentence. And that's why Latin word order can be a bit more flexible than English word order, right? Because even if we rearrange the words, the endings still tell us what our subject is and what our direct object is. So for example, we have our sentence, the dog bites the slave in Latin. We have canis servum mordet. Now, if I have canem servus mordet, you see our endings have changed. I've still kept our word for dog as the first word in the sentence, but I've changed it from this ending, this is ending here, to an em ending. Now, this ending happens to be our what we call an accusative case direct object ending in Latin. So even though this word is, n is the first word in the sentence, in this sentence it is now the direct object. So I'm going to translate this as the slave bites the dog, not the dog bites the slave. So this is just something to keep in mind as we're starting to kind of get some more complex grammar reading Latin sentences is you can't always rely on a word order to give you meaning, right? You really need to pay attention to the endings of words as we see them in the sentence. Um, now, quick note, there are some patterns that Latin does follow. Um, usually the subject is gonna be towards the beginning of the sentence, and usually the ver verb is gonna be at the end of the sentence. So this is a pattern that Latin does like to follow, right? They're just not quite as strict um, about word order as English is. If I change up the word or it's not word order, it's not necessarily going to affect the meaning of the sentence, how the sentence is translated, right? But there are kind of patterns you can uh, that you can usually point out. So keep that in mind. All right, now noun functions. What do nouns do, right? A noun is a person, place, or thing. That much is still the same. Uh, but in Latin, uh, they're going to change their endings based on their function. So what the noun is doing in the sentence. Uh, like I said, we've, so far we've had seen a subject and direct object. These are two different functions of nouns, right? And in Latin, as we saw in that example, the endings are going to change depending on this function. 
Now we do have some examples of this in English. Mostly we see this with pronouns in English, right? So we have examples, um, he, I, or they. These are forms of the pronouns that we use if it's the subject of the sentence, right? He sees a dog. I see a dog. They see a dog. In all of those sentences, these are acting as a subject, right? Now, if I want to change this to it being the direct object, I wouldn't say the dog sees he, or the dog sees I, or the dog sees they. That's incorrect English, right? We actually change the pronoun when it's an object. So, for example, the dog sees him, the dog sees me, or the dog sees them. There are other uh, functions that nouns can have. Another example would be a possessive. Um, so in English, again, pronouns will change if you say his dog, right? The dog is his, right? My dog, and this one even changes if I rearrange the order. The dog is mine and their dog, right? The dog is theirs. So these are forms of the pronoun if it's showing possession, right? If it's ownership of something. So this is a bit of a remnant of how um, we have this in English, where the word forms will change based on their function. Again, in English, this is mostly with our pronouns. Um, in Latin, it's going to be across the board for all nouns. So <laughs> I kind of reused my sentence. We have he bit the dog, the dog bit him, right? Or the dog is his. So some examples of that. All right. Now, to review, the subject right, of the sentence, one of our noun functions can be the subject. The subject is the person or thing that does the action, right? For example, in our sentence, the dog bites the slave. The dog is the one doing the action of biting, right? The dog bites, okay? So dog is our subject there. The direct object is the person or thing that receives the action. So in the sentence, the dog bites the slave. The slave is the, the person or thing that's being bitten. The action is affecting this, that, the direct object, in this case, the slave. All right. So this is how kind of the function of these types of words work. Now in Latin, right, these functions are represented by what we call cases. And each of these cases has a different name. So noun cases tell us the function of a noun in a sentence, and each case will have a different ending. So we're focusing on two today, the subject case and the direct object case, which again have specific names in Latin. So we have the nominative case, and then a few other cases that we're not gonna worry about just yet. We have the genitive case, the dative case, then we have the accusative case, and the ablative case. Now, nominative and accusative are the two cases we are going to be focusing on for the time being. Um, as I said, nominative is going to be used for the subject of the sentence. If you've noticed, all of our subjects have been in purple. <laughs> so nominative case is used for the subject, the person or thing that does the action. There's a few different nominative endings we've seen so far, so here's some examples. Right? We've seen nominative objects that end in A, such as Lucia, Metella, Ankila, and Philia. Uh, we've seen some nominative subjects that end in U.S., Caecilius, Servus, Coquus, and Dominus. And then we've seen a few other options, O-R, E-R, and I-S, Pater, Mater, Canis, and Mercator. Now, in addition to nouns having different cases for to show the function, nouns can belong to different groups that follow a similar pattern of endings. Um, and we'll kind of get more into that later on once we're more familiar with how nouns work. But that's why I've grouped them this way. Nouns that end in A are gonna have the same sets of endings for their other cases. Same with nouns that end in US, they're gonna have a different set of endings for their other cases. And then this third group, there's kind of a few different options for what the nominative ending can be, um, but that's going to have its own set of endings for the other cases. That's going to be different from these two groups. So just keep that in mind. Now, the accusative case, again, is used for the direct object of the sentence. It's the word that receives the action of the verb. Noun endings will, ch noun endings will change to the accusative case when they are the direct object. So those endings that we saw on that last slide, this is how they're going to change when they become accusative. 
So nouns that end in A will change to an AM ending in the accusative case. So we have Natellam, Lukiam, Ankilam, and Filiam. All right, so we just basically added M to the end of that, and that tells us it's an accusative direct object. Nouns that end in U-S in the nominative will change to a U-M in the accusative. So caecilium, servum, coquum, and dominum. And then that third group, again, the one that had kind of a few options for what its nominative ending is, all of those are going to change to an E-M ending in the accusative case. So that's nice. Is even though there's a few options for the nominative, all of them are going to have the same E-M accusative ending. So pater becomes patrem. Mater becomes matrem, canis becomes canem, and mercator becomes mercatorem. So basically, kind of a little cheat, if a noun ends in an M, you can pretty safely assume that that is your direct object of your sentence, okay? So accusative direct objects will end in, end in the letter M, it's just a different vowel will be before it, depending on what the noun ends in, in its nominative case. All right, so that is kind of wraps up our grammar lesson for now. Um, go back through the video if you need to or check out the slides separately. I'll post them separately. Um, and make sure you take notes on the different nominative and accusative endings. We're going to be getting a lot more in-depth with these um, over the course of this chapter. In the next chapter, we're going to be doing a lot of pr practice with these different endings for our nouns. Um, but it's just to kind of start getting used to the idea that our word endings are going to change and we need to know what those endings are and what that means about what that word is doing in a sentence. So it might seem a little bit complicated and overwhelming right now, but we're going to do lots of practice. So just make sure you write these nominative and accusative endings down um, somewhere in a, your notebook and then uh, we'll do lots more practice going forward. I'll have a few worksheets and things available for you guys. Okay, that is all I have. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions about the grammar. Um, again, it's a lot easier when I'm in person talking with you guys. So if you ever want to set up a Zoom meeting, if you're unable to attend class um, one week and are confused by the grammar, um, please let me know. I'm happy to kind of go through uh, the homework assignments and go through the translations and stuff with you. All right, otherwise, while I take to sleep, thank you and have a wonderful day.